Okay, welcome back everybody. Today we are talking about forces and soon free body diagrams. So let's just define a force. You know, a lot of times we hear a force is a push or a pull, you know, which many times it is. However, the more intricate um, definition, I would say is any interaction that when unopposed will change the motion of an object. So whenever an object is changing its motion, but whether it's getting faster, slowing down, turning, whatever, that's because a force is acting on it, okay? Something can't suddenly get faster or slow down or turn without a force, okay? So the only thing that can cause an object to accelerate is a force. All right, so that's a force. Uh, types of forces. So there are many different types of forces, but here are the forces we will encounter in the near future in this chapter. Okay, so anyway, there's a lot, but I'm just talking about this chapter, this unit that we're doing. Force of gravity, a force exerted from very massive objects like planets. A better definition will be given further into the year. So force of gravity, gravity, you know, it depends on the planet you're on or the object that you're on. If you're on the moon, there's not as much gravity. If you're on Earth, we learned that it's around 10 meters per second squared and so on and so forth. Okay. Force applied, a, a force that is oftentimes exerted uh, from a living creature. So, you know, if I'm pushing something, that's a force applied. Um, if an animal pushes something, it's a force applied. <coughs> Normal force, also known as contact force, a for force that surfaces uh, exert so they don't just pass through each other. So if like, for example, if my pen is on the table here, there's a normal force that's holding it up, okay? If I'm sitting on my chair, the chair is holding me up, that contact force is what we call a normal force. Okay, so things that are just, I, I like to call it like contact force because things are in contact with each other. The surfaces are holding us up or keeping us up. And that's what we call the normal force. Um, okay. Force of friction, a force that opposes motion. Uh, force of tension, a force that is exerted from a rope, string, cable, wire, or chain. It could get a bit more complex. For example, if I'm hanging on a monkey bar, there's going to be tension in my arms. But anyway, um that's what it basically is all right here we go okay so a free body diagram this is a lot of the problems that we're going to be doing a free body diagram is a drawing that shows all the forces acting on an object drawing free body diagrams can help when trying to solve problems involving forces so for example let's look at this first diagram here we see let's say there's a box on the table we can when we're looking at this free body diagram of this box we see there's two forces there's a force of gravity that's pulling it down. However, at the same time, there's a normal force where that's the table holding it up. Okay, so it's not moving because both of those forces are canceling each other out. Okay, so now uh, let's look at diagram number two. So in here, we have this box, but it's on an incline. And we have force one over here. You can think about what that force is. Uh, I'm going to use a different color. But what we should know is this force that's going straight down, that is going to be the force of gravity. And this one that's going, I'm going to call it perpendicular to the surface. This is going to be the normal force. So this is the, uh, this is the inclined plane kind of pushing up against it. Okay. And good thing to know about normal force is it is perpendicular to the surface almost all the time. Okay, and force two over here, let's say as this is sliding down over here, what's this gonna be? What do you guys think that's gonna be? And that's gonna be the force of friction. Okay, uh, over here, I'm just gonna go through it quickly. We have the force normal, force of gravity going straight through. Force two over here, the string is pulling it, so that's gonna be the force of tension. This is also the force of tension with the string uh, as it's going down, still pulling it up, and the force of gravity of this blue box. Okay, let's look at some things. The forces are represented by the arrows. From the diagram, label which force each arrow represents. A man is pushing a box to the right against a rough surface. Okay. So this is for uh, number one, and this is diagram one over here. Okay. Uh, number two, a woman is lifting a box into the air. Okay. So let's label everything. So a man is pushing a box to the right against a rough surface. So if he's pushing it to the right, that's going to be the force applied. 
this box is going to be getting pulled down, so we're going to call that the force of gravity. Uh, the, the box is also getting held up by the ground, so we're going to call that the normal force. And the leftward force, because it's a rough surface that's indicating there is friction, so we're going to call that the force of friction. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, moving on. A woman is lifting a heavy box into the air. So we should always say, like, there's gravity. Unless, like, you're in space, there's always going to be gravity. So I like to always just kind of start out with drawing the free body diagram of gravity because it's always just straight down. And then if this woman is lifting up into the air, what she's doing is she's applying a force to it. So force applied. Okay. Okay, moving on. Okay, so let's look at this next example, number two. Draw a free body, di free body diagram, FDD, for the following problem. A book is at rest on a tabletop. Diagram the forces acting on the book. Again, pause it if you like to try it. But here we go. Uh, here we go. So the book right here is in green, and we can see it's at rest on a tabletop. There's two forces, the force of gravity and a normal force where the table is holding it up. A rightward force is applied to a book in order to move it across a, a desk at a constant velocity. Consider frictional forces. Okay, so it's telling you to consider it. And we should also know if something's getting pushed to the right, but it's moving with a constant velocity, uh, that should tell you that the forces in the x direction or to the right and left are canceling each other out. Okay, because it's not accelerating. That might be a little complicated. We'll talk more about that in the future. But anyway. Here we go. <clears throat> so think about that. Oops. And it should look something like this, okay? Same thing. Uh, gravity's pulling it down. The table's holding it up um, or the desk. And you're pushing it to the right, but there's also frictional forces. Okay. See, a football is moving upward towards its peak after being booted by the punter. Diagram the forces acting upon the football as it rises up towards its peak. This one is a little bit tricky. It's going to look something like this. And you might be thinking, what? Like, it got hit. Why isn't there a force applied going this way? I know that's what most people are probably going to be thinking. But it's true. It did get hit. But it got hit right at the very beginning. Right at the very beginning, it got hit. But it wasn't hit while it's going towards the air. So at the very beginning, the moment it was hit, there was a force applied. But as soon as it was hit, there was no longer a force applied. There's only a force of gravity on its way towards the top. Okay? So when you're drawing a free body diagram, it's talking about what's being applied to it you know, throughout its motion or when it's asking for it. So while it's going up in the air, it's not being kicked. It's not being pushed up or anything like that. Force of gravity is just pulling it down. A little tricky, and um, we're going to be doing a few examples with that, so if you don't get it right away, totally fine. An egg is free-falling from, uh, from a nest in a tree. Diagram the forces acting on the egg as it's falling. Okay? It's going to just look like that, force of gravity. Uh, and, of course, we're not talking about air resistance unless it mentions something about air resistance. Okay, moving on. Let's say you were in deep space where there is essentially no gravity or air resistance and everything is weightless. While you are cruising around in space and floating around in your space station, you encounter a hammer that is perfectly still and not moving. In order to move this hammer, will it require a force? Yes or no and why? Yes, without a force, it will remain at rest forever. Okay, so to move something, if it's at rest, to get something to change its motion, you need to do a force, okay? That's kind of the definition of a force there, okay? It forces change motion, so you would need to, even if something is quote-unquote weightless, okay? And we'll talk more about that. Uh, example number three, a car is on a frictionless surface and is moving with a constant velocity of five meters per second. What amount of force is required to keep this car in motion? Uh, A, zero newtons. B, 2.5 newtons, C, 5 newtons, D, 10 newtons. So the correct answer is 0 newtons. Remember, to all objects want to keep doing what they're already doing. And if something is frictionless and sliding on a frictionless surface, that means you don't need any force to keep it 
moving okay there's no there's nothing slowing it down or anything like that so you don't need any force to change its motion okay a force is only going to change its motion so if it wants it to go faster or to slow down then there's going to be a force that's required but to have something keep doing what it's already doing you don't need a force for that i know it's a little weird because that's not how we think about the world but it is how most of the universe works most of the universe is space and that's how it works in space okay equilibrium rule when the net force on an object is equal to zero um, that's what equilibrium is. So there's a few things that we can talk about that. So when the velocity of an object is zero, so even though this guy is pushing on it, uh, we have, you know, this guy's pushing on with the force applied, but there's a force of friction keeping it from moving. So it's in equilibrium because the force applied and the force of friction are canceling each other out. Same thing with the force of gravity and the normal force, they're canceling out. So everything is canceling out so that's why it's in equilibrium. This one over here, uh, again, multiple people are pushing on it and it seems like with the same amount of force. And that means they're canceling out because it's not moving, the velocity is zero. Uh, and it's not moving, so we can see that it's in equilibrium. This one's a little bit confusing. So we see here that the acceleration is equal to zero but the velocity is three meters per second. So it's moving with a constant velocity, but it's still in equilibrium. And the reason for that is because there's a force applied to it, but there's also a force of friction and the friction is not allowing it to accelerate. Okay, it's going, it's getting pushed and the friction is keeping it at a constant velocity. So even though it's moving, it's not accelerating and therefore it's in equilibrium. Okay, so that's important to know. When it's not accelerating, it is in equilibrium. Okay, when the net force on an object is equal to zero, when it is not accelerating, there's it's in equilibrium. <coughs> it can be moving and have the net force be zero, and it can it can be moving and the acceleration can be zero. Okay, let's let's look at this. Which object is not in equilibrium? Okay, think about it. Look at it won't be A because force normal, force gravity canceling each other out and that force is zero. This one, uh, the forces in the X direction cancel each other out, normal force and force of gravity cancel each other out, not this. This one here, we have force normal and force of gravity cancel each other out. However, the total amount of force over here is 12 while the total amount of force here is 15. So this means this one is not in equilibrium because there's more force going on the left, meaning it's going to be accelerating to the left. So even though D over here is moving, it doesn't, uh, that's not, that doesn't mean that there's going to be a net force on it, okay? Because uh, it could be moving with a constant velocity, meaning acceleration is zero. All right. All right, moving on. What is the net force for the following objects? Okay, so let's look at part A. We can see that the net force, I'm just going to do it like this, net force for part A, uh, I'm going to call it negative 80 or 80 newtons to the left. I'm going to call it eight, a negative 80 newtons. I feel like that's a bit more simple. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to do that. Uh, this one was net force. Everything seems to cancel out. So the net force over here is equal to zero. Over here, the tops cancel out, but the bottoms don't. So this would be, uh, the net force would be 60 minus 10. So 50 newtons positive 50. And this one over here, uh, tops cancel out, but the bottoms don't. So that would be uh, 30 newtons positive. All right, everyone, example number five, free body diagram, what is the net force for the following objects? So let's look at part A here. We can see that all the forces in the leftward direction total up to 20. All the forces in the rightward direction total up to 85. So we can do 80 minus 20, and we can see the net force is equal to 65. Uh, this is the symbol for net force, so 65 newtons. Uh, it's positive because it's going to the right. You could also say 65 newtons to the right, but anyway. All right, part B here. Uh, let's look in the y direction first. We can see that we have 40 and 40, 40 going down, 40 going up, so they cancel each other out. Then we can see there's a total of 13 going to the left and a total of 5 going to the right. We're going to do 13 minus 5. 
I'm going to do sum of all forces. Oops, this is equal to negative 8 newtons. I'm going to say negative 8 because that's showing that the net force is going to the left direction. But you can also say, oops, 8 newtons to the left. Okay. Uh, part C, uh, what you can do is we have the 20s here and they cancel out because one's going up, one's going down. And then we have a total of 13 going to the left, total of 10 going to the right. And now I can say the sum of all forces is equal to negative 3 newtons. Or you can say again, uh, you can say 3 newtons to the left. Okay, last one here. We have stuff that are going up and down. Total going up is 40. Total going down is 75. So I can say the net force is equal to 40 minus 75. So that's going to be negative 35 newtons, or you could have said 35 newtons down. All right, so let's look at this final example. Uh, example number six, find the force. What is the magnitude of force for each letter? So over here, let's look at this one here. We see that there's a net force of 15 newtons to the right. Okay. If we know that, that we know, then we should know that the net force in the up and down direction or in the y direction should cancel out. Okay, so if this is 30 newtons, that means this should also be 30 newtons to cancel out. Since there's only one force in the x direction, we should know that this is going to be equal to 15 newtons. Okay, moving on. Uh, now let's look at this one. <coughs> <coughs> Net force is 80 newtons up. Okay, so we should know in the x direction, they should be canceling out. So if, since this is 40 newtons going to the right, D should be equal to 40 newtons. And then C, uh, there should be a net force of 80 newtons. So if this is 20, that means this should be equal to 100 newtons because 100 minus 20 is going to be equal to 80 newtons. All right, let's look at this one up here. Okay, net force is 12 newtons to the left. That means the up and down should cancel. This is 30 newtons. And if it's 12, I'm going to do, what is that? Uh, <laughs> minus, no, it's going to be plus. So this should be 40 newtons. Four, so I know 40 minus 28 is equal to 12 newtons to the left. And then let's do uh, this over here. Uh, 2 newtons up. So that means in the x direction, this should cancel. So this 22 newtons canceling in the x direction. And the y, this should be equal to 14 newtons because there should be a 2 more up here. Okay, A30, B15, C100, D40, E40, F30, G14, and H22. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking about mass versus weight. All right. See you.